Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry's a continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, today we are going to go into the memes channel in the Discord and check out some more history memes. So basically what happens here is my mods on Discord pull some of the uh, good memes that come through our channel and put them into a place where I can go ahead and check them out and... You guys can come with me. Hopefully we got some uh, fun ones there. We can learn some stuff. If there's things I can explain, great. But I find a lot of these things sometimes go over my head. <laughs> a lot of times there's an inner joke, you know, and that's where I need your help. Um, you can come help explain some of the ones I don't know. And I'll try to explain the ones that maybe you don't know. So that will be the plan today. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get going, though, um, if you like what we're seeing here and you haven't subbed to the channel, love to have you as a sub. Hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell for the notifications. So you can come hang out when we do live premieres and live streams. And that'd be awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. See what we got here today. All right, so, oh my gosh, we got a giant unicycle here. All right, uh, Tito. All right, so we're going with the, going some Yugoslavian past here. Um, it says, uh, no, see, keeping Yugoslavia united is super easy. <laughs> here, just watch what I'm doing so you can do it after I die. <laughs> so Yugoslavia is kind of an interesting experiment, if you will. You know, after after World War I, um, the Balkans, the whole area was a mess. It's part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And part of the uh, what happened after World War I is self-determination took place. And um, those places left the Aust uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire. And a lot of that region ended up unifying into Yugoslavia. And if you're wondering, what the heck is Yugoslavia? That's because that country also does not exist uh, anymore. Up until about the 90s, they had so much. Uh, Yugoslavia was such a diverse place today. You know, it's broken up into smaller nations. We got like Croatia, um, Serbia, Bosnia, those areas. Um, but yeah, so you had this attempt at trying to keep them together. And Tito was one of their leaders there. And you could see, yeah, the idea is you couldn't juggle. There's so many different ethnic groups and there's different religious groups and all this stuff. And the Balkans has kind of been a mess. Uh, wasn't it Bismarck, um, Otto von Bismarck, who said that the, uh, the Balkans was what is going to create catastrophe or something like that and he wasn't wrong because that's exactly where the ball got rolling that started world war one so anyway and it just keeps going and then through the 90s and then issues today so it's such a diverse place so yeah it's like juggling all these different things i get the meme there that's great <laughs> all right cool all right we got next so i haven't seen any of these that's kind of the point is my mods put these together and i hadn't seen them and they uh try to Pull out some of the good ones. Oh, we got more Yugoslavia stuff. All right, Inquisitor, my kind of head admin. Tito dies. <laughs> it's a leader. He dies. Everyone in Yugoslavia. So anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> so we got Danny DeVito. Is this specifically from like, um, what's that show? Uh, uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. No, I mean, he was in, he's been in so many things. But yeah, same thing along the line where you got a leader, I guess, that can kind of keep it together. And then once it's uh, once they die, it's like all over the place right so all right right on all right we'll go next oh it's a big meme so it's hard to click down okay what we got here okay uh let's see build your own submarines all right we got america we got some little little brain action buy your submarines from other countries canada a little bit a little bit bigger brain um going on there Buy your submarines with debt you are unlikely to repay. All right, we got the uh, we got the Greeks there. Uh, ec economic disaster happened in Greece uh, a few years ago and plummeted the whole EU, which has led to a lot of things like countries trying to leave the EU, you know, like Britain or something like that because of the economic ties. Uh, well, they're not part of the uh, yeah part of the EU being being a, a part of that. All right, then we got let your allies dock their submarines in your base and then steal them. <laughs> okay so um a lot of ways okay so you can see with with uh, the submarines you build your own k okay, america a lot of places don't have the manufacturing to build them you know you have economic problems like greece and then canada there and then let your uh, allies dock their submarines in your base and steal them i need to be better with flags okay someone help me here um of what they're referring to specifically but let your allies dock their submarines in your base and then steal them that's great. <laughs> All right, moving on. 
All right, bald characters are always the most overpowered. All right, we got Thanos, we got Mussolini, we got Shrek, and then we got Dr. Phil. Very, very nice. That was kind of, yeah, just, yeah the, the bald guys, it was either bald or a mustache. And in World War II, everybody, I mean, uh, Mussolini was, was the bald, but then the rest had, you know, these characteristic mustaches. They all had them. Um, like Tojo has one, and then Adolf Hitler, and uh, Joseph Stalin is a giant face caterpillar, so... Um, is Shrek really overpowered? And same with, uh, <laughs> same with Dr. Phil. Nice. Mussolini, yep. Good stuff. Don't trust someone that's bald. Yikes. All right. Okay, draw a card for every battle where you were outnumbered but still won. Admiral Yee. <laughs> okay, so... That happened. Uh, if you don't know the Admiral your uh, Admiral Yi story, check out the extra here extra histories mini series. I did a um, a reaction video to that too. If you want to see that, but Admiral Yi was a um, a Korean admiral, um, so he controlled kind of the navy of, of Korea uh, back in the what 16th century, and they uh, Japan was interested uh, in in um, some uh, or, or, or was um, trying to expand and, and threaten it at China and places like that, and um, they were going to go through Korea and they didn't really have a good time doing that because Admiral Yi would have this Navy and was always outnumbered by the Japanese, but one just repeatedly, repeatedly with like incredible success and he wouldn't lose very many ships and entire Japanese fleets would be just, just obliterated. Um, so he's, yeah, just seen as one of the most successful admirals in history. So he's got all the draw cards cause he did it so many times. I like that. That's good. Good work. Good work. Okay, what do we got here? The History Channel at 3 a.m. November 1945, the Nuremberg Trial. You got a very uh, depressed and haggard-looking uh, Thomas the Train Engine, as did all the Nazis on this. The Nuremberg Trial was the war crimes trial that basically the surviving Nazi leadership were put upon. Um, guys like Hermann Goering, uh, again, the surviving ones that didn't die or commit suicide and stuff like that. Actually, some did during... Um, some actually did during the, the trial process in their prison cells. But, yeah, it didn't look too good there. We had Nuremberg trial. Then there was a, um, a trial for Japan and Japan for war crimes as well. But the Nuremberg's kind of the big famous one that ended up happening there. Something like 20-something ended up going on trial. I think half of them got death penalties. Other got prison sentences from life in prison. Some got acquitted. So pretty interesting to see something like that, um, these war crime trials. So. But there we go. Yep. <laughs> Now, why is it... Now, can someone explain me why it's Thomas? Help me out on that one. Again, this, 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 these type of videos, you help me, I help you, all right? That's, that's what we're doing here. Oh, gosh, it's too small. But, okay, hopefully you can see this. We got mustard gas in World War One, mustard gas in elementary school acts. <laughs> All right, so mustard gas was the one of the you know new inventions, sort of of that of, uh, came in World War One and was maybe the most feared weapon of all because of its uh, slow, painful death that it, that it gave you there. And then I don't know, it, I, I don't remember Axe body spray being a thing when I was in elementary school. But were, is that when like kids were starting to do that, or did, did kids just bring cans of that to like terrorize the other students? You guys help me with that. Is that is that a thing I'm too old for now? With the body spray. We didn't have body we didn't use body spray when I was in, in elementary school. We were kids. We didn't care about that crap. We were stinky and gross. Alright, what do we got? Alright, Nazi Germany stepping all over the UK and France, even though they lost to the UK, but did defeat France. And then Soviet Union <laughs> stomps on them. <laughs> Gotta make sense. Uh, Soviet Union just, I mean, although it was very tough at first, ended up pushing back so hard against the Germans, especially after and with, with and after, uh, the battle at Stalingrad and just were, you know, uh, the German lives were just dropping like flies along with the Soviet Union. I mean, go ahead and look at a casualties chart. The Soviet Union lost pretty much double anyone else, um, in World War II, but yeah, big, big boot Soviet Union for sure. <laughs> nice. All right, let's move on. Germany is now playing Heart of Iron 4. Free real estate. Poland. Oh, oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> 
So Hearts of Iron, the game I get asked to play all the time, but I don't have time to go, unfortunately, into some of those cooler, they look cool, long strategy games. I know it's a World War II kind of simulation thing, right? And of course, Jogs Poland uh, is going to be invading, or sorry, Germany is going to be invading Poland, uh, September 1st, 1939, which ends up kicking off uh, World War II. Now, what you could also put in to add this meme even better is Germany and the Soviet Union are playing Hearts of Iron because they both invaded Poland. So that would even make this meme even better. Meme makers, you could do that. So they're playing, and then they both, uh, uh, they go into Poland. <laughs> Poor Poland, man. Polish history is rough. Just being torn between Central and Western Europe and then Eastern Europe and Russia. It's like, just their history is a tug of war. All right, what do we got here? France, according to, uh, hist okay, Reddit history memes. Canada, according to history memes. Now I'm gonna have to look at the Reddit history memes. Is this you guys are gonna have to help me out on that because I don't I don't go on Reddit really. Um, France, according to say so like France looks really nice in history memes. Is that what happens there? But the Canada is Canada like like a meme in history that they're just because that because Canada's like you know never lost a war before. Is that is that the joke there they're trying to get at? And is that how there's a lot of memes, tough memes of Canada? Help me out with that one in the comments. Okay. All right, what do we got here? All right, it's kind of smaller there. Let's see. It says, Russia, great power. No one can survive Russian winter. Sorry, it's kind of small there. Who's, who's showing up at the bottom there? You're going to get my face big on the camera because i got to look closer. Mods, we need bigger memes. Mod fail. I can't really, is it Finland? Finland and Norway? Is that the flags going through? Okay, because the, okay, wait, okay, I see the other stuff. So we got, is it on the left? Is it supposed to, so over here, sorry, over here, is that, uh, is that supposed to be like the Germans? Because it's not really a swastika. Then you got like the French. So we got like maybe like the Nazis and the French who both died catastrophically trying to invade Russia. You got Napoleon and then Hitler. But then is this going to be because this looks like a, I, the flags aren't very clear that I can see on my screen. So do we got uh, like Finland and Norway over here who are like, hey, we live in this stuff anyways. Who cares? <laughs> if so, that would make sense. And that would make for the good meme there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, gosh. More Canada memes. Who's posting these small memes? Oh, we need to ban Anubis from Modship. Just kidding. All right. Canadians normally and Canadians at war. Okay. So you got normal Canadians. All right. So it must be a thing in Reddit where it's just because the Canadians, they're known for they've never lost a war before that they are just like, yeah, you got like the evil, aggressive looking Thomas there. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. I guess I missed that. I guess Canada's a meme, I guess. All right, what do we got here? China. <clears throat> China, you can't defeat me. And then the British, I know, but I know, but he can. Poppies. Okay, so we're going with opium here. That's the big thing. So China uh, had a restrictive policy towards trade because China does not want to import goods. They are good with exporting and selling goods, you know, to Europe and places like that. Problem is with places like Britain or really anywhere in Europe, um, nobody in Europe makes anything that the Chinese want. So the Chinese basically said, no, all we want is cash. We want gold, silver, and then that's it. And to get around that, the British... Uh, try to find something that they could get the Chinese to want. And that was secretly, and at least at, front, or at first, kind of secretly uh, selling opium into the port cities, which becomes a catastrophic problem for China as addiction to it was so bad and um, was kind of ruining their culture um, with that. I mean, people from the poorest people all the way up to the emperor himself, who I believe used it um, at certain times. And the... Um, this ends up leading to a big problem between the Chinese and the British because the Chinese emperor eventually is going to ban it. They're going to ban the trade. And the British said, nah, no, you're not. Um, and if you try, then we are going to have a war. And that's exactly what happened in the 1800s is uh, the Opium Wars, as it was called. And this was a really big eye-opening thing for the Chinese because um, 
the Chinese lost this war and had to concede a whole bunch of things to the British. And it was a big eye-opening thing because, you know, China is the largest country in the world and just lost to a small nation, you know, on the other side of the planet. But remember, this is the industrial era where Chinese was not did not participate in the Industrial Revolution like this. And Britain was able to modernize their military and so, as such that they were over, able to overcome massive deficits of you know, like a population, a small place like Britain versus um, China, and but won that war and was able to exploit China even further. So getting the country addicted to opium, which comes from these poppy plants you can see over there, which is uh, where uh, Britain was getting from modern day Afghanistan and then was selling that over to the Chinese. So there, um, one of the opium wars is one of the, I think, most important and interesting wars that does not get talked about enough. Um, look into it if you don't know it. It's pretty, pretty uh, interesting. Oh my gosh. Is this a meme for ants, Anubis? Oh, all right, we're going up close. Sorry if you can't see this. Close up on my face. Canada and Denmark are in territorial dispute. Sorry if you can't hear. Over Hans Island, their war consists of removing the other's country, other country's flag, planting theirs, and leaving a bottle of brandy or whiskey behind. Confused screaming what from NATO or something. Oh, I can't see very well. Is that really what happened? That's quite a brutal war where they're uh, disputing over alliance with the Denmark and uh, Canada was taking each other's flags down, planting theirs, and leaving whiskey behind. Can we just fight all um, wars like that? <laughs> sorry if you couldn't see that my mods are only supposed to put up uh, large memes but that's not really happening here alright describe world history in a few words <laughs> it's Europe oh it's the whole world groans angry everywhere else noises happening here but shoot modern history since basically about the 1500s largely dominated by European uh, exploration, conquest, industrialization, economics, and then starting world wars. What a mess. All right, here we go. We got some, uh, some more SpongeBob. All right. Thomas Jefferson trying to negotiate the Louisiana Purchase from the French in 1803. I I have $3. <laughs> That's kind of a big thing. So, so Louisiana back then is not just like the state of Louisiana we have now, a very small state. Louisiana was basically the middle third of, the, of what's today the United States, and that was owned by France. And um, the story kind of is, is Thomas Jefferson was an expansionist, President Jefferson, and originally just wanted to buy the port of New Orleans which is where the Mississippi River ends, um, or it connects to the ocean. And the Mississippi River was kind of the economic bloodline of uh, Western America at that time. And New Orleans is where everything kind of meet, all those river tributaries meet into the Gulf and then get shipped out. It's a very important thing. And he sent uh, Monroe um, um, over to uh, negotiate with the French for, uh, I forget how many million, like six million, I, I, correct me on the numbers, but was, was millions of dollars uh, going to show up and uh, to, to offer this. And Napoleon's in charge here, and he's like, hey, you know what? Because Napoleon really needed to focus his efforts on Europe. He's like, I'll sell you all of our territory basically in North America. Um, maybe double the price. Ends up going for, what, $15 million or something? Maybe a little more than double the price. We'll just give you New Orleans. We'll give you the whole thing. So it's been seen as one of the most profitable purchases America has and owes a lot of that, again, to the, I guess, the military ambitions of Napoleon where he couldn't worry about, you know, North America that much anymore and needed cash quick. So it did that. Um, so they end up agreeing to the deal. Actually, kind of got in a little bit of trouble, but they kind of, uh, Monroe, was it Monroe, I believe? Because um, any kind of territorial acquisition for America is supposed to come through Congress. And he agreed to this deal without congressional approval because I think, I think Napoleon was like, hey, agree to this now for this money and it's yours, but I got, you got to, we got to do this now. And Congress, I think when he comes back to Congress and, and, uh, and that sort of thing, there were some people like, hey, you can't be doing that. You know, it's got to go through us and all that stuff. But they realized it was such a good deal that it was like a you know, little slap on the wrist and it was fine. Uh, but basically double the size of the United States for very, very little money. But yeah, I have, th I have $3. Ah, <laughs> uh, too small again. 
late Canadian Prime Minister William Leon Mackenzie King's nickname was Mr. Potato Head due to his habit of sticking things in his ears. Wow, who sticks things in their ears? Good job, Canada. All right, ah, uh, Master China. So it's the British. I take it you are here to allow us to trade opium. All right, we got China. No, we actually think it's uncool. Could you maybe stop? And then Britain comes in. It's treason. Then. All right, so we got Star Wars. We got some uh, Star Wars going there. It's treason. Then. So, yeah, the Chinese were like, no. I mean, they were buying it. People were buying it. But like, no, we don't want it. And the British are like, no, sorry, you're going to do this. This is, this is what's happening. Since you guys won't buy our other stuff, um, you will. We, we reserve the right to sell this horribly addicting thing that was ruining their society all right america won world war one okay doors okay america won world war two right all claims that americans make but no one else in the rest of the world really says america won the war of 1812 boom canada we better watch your mouth yeah uh, basically a Canadian victory, um, which is maybe why the War of 1812 doesn't get talked about that much. It also wasn't nearly a consequential, but, oh, um, I've heard that in Canada, learning about and, and knowing about War of 1812 is much, much bigger in Canada than it is in America. America, it's like a page in a textbook, but the Canadians I know are all about that. So <laughs> they take a lot of pride in that. All right, who would win? A powerful Chinese dynasty with a rich history and a mandate of heaven or some white guys dealing drugs. Yes, that's pretty much it. You know, this reminds me of a, a stat I heard and I got to I got to I got to um, um, double check on it. But I heard due to the success of the opium trade, I had heard that opium made up something like one fifth of the whole GDP, the whole economy of the British, of the money that they make, a fifth of the largest empire in the world at that time, or ever, world's largest empire ever, in the largest economy of the world, drugs, basically this opium, drugs, was like one-fifth of their entire economy. That's unbelievable, isn't it, to think about that. A nation's income, fifth of their income, the biggest economy in the world, pretty much, for a fifth of it was coming from drugs. Nuts, huh? All right, more British America stuff. What do we got? Has anyone seen Canada? Hold on, I got this. <clears throat> War of 1812. We beat America. Kick their... Uh, burn the White House, which they did. They burned the White House down. Canada, Canadian militia beat... Or best militia. So it's like Canada doesn't really care, but if like you're going to mention the War of 1812, they're going to come in and, and totally flex on it. So this goes back to what I was saying about how the how apparently how serious the Canadians take it. <laughs> all right, looks like that's going to do it for us for memes today. That's what's all in uh, in there right now. So awesome! Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got some good ones there. We definitely had the uh, the kind of <laughs> a lot of stuff with. The British and the Opium Wars, and then Canada, a lot of that stuff. So that's that's all good and true. All right. Well, anyways, guys, thanks for doing this. Um, if you would like to potentially get memes featured in here, basically, here's what happens. you got to join our Discord server. There's a link down below. And there's a, just a memes, uh, a history memes channel, right? And people, they pump those in. You can pump up stuff. Be sure to read the guidelines. We do have guidelines about what kind of memes are kind of acceptable. Just think, are they appropriate for a classroom, right? This isn't reddit here you know trying to create a um educational kind of environment here of course we're having fun i know a lot of memes cry you know get push that line and i and i get that and all but anyways you can put them there and then what happens is our mods um kind of filter through some of them again put them in another server that uh, is just for me and then I, I go look at that but that's something if you'd like to get involved and if you haven't joined our discord server you should do it anyways we got um a good uh, nearly six thousand people um that are members and talk about all kinds of different topics and it's a, a fun place to hang out on the internet so but yeah, go ahead and join that. If you haven't subbed, thanks for doing that. Thanks for liking my videos. Uh, thanks to patrons and channel members who have been financially kind of helping just with little bits here and there. Really appreciate what you do. But thanks um, just for being here. Even if it's just for looking at the memes. Maybe that's the only thing you join my channel for. But if you are appreciating anything with history, I think it's a good thing. And uh, history education is so important. And being a part of that in a small way is very, very appreciated. All right, with that, we'll see you guys next time. And bye.